I was like, man, that quarantine 15 is all in his beard. Yeah, he's got a big old, big old beard going. Uh, we are now live, so please don't talk ill about uh, Dr. Dupree's beard. Oh, no, I mean, it's just gotten big. Yeah, no, no, I'm kidding. Um, let's see here. Let me make sure. Yeah, the quarantine, it changes people. Truly does. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't. I didn't look. I didn't watch that video, but I saw that video of him, like just a second of it, where he's talking to the seniors, and I was like, "Oh, that's a that's a big beard." <laughs> that you know, no one's getting trims. <laughs> no, not at all. That you know, no one's getting trims. <laughs> uh, actually, I completely shaved my beard, though. I was just like, "All right, well, I'm not. I'm not." I'm not doing this big bushy beard nonsense. <laughs> it, I, it, it's uncomfortable. I couldn't. I can't commiserate. <laughs> I did see that we could create our own badges in Schoology, so we could be. If you, I mean, we could come up with some kind of badge for each day. There's like a whole parade, like you know, because they can't do stickers. Oh yeah, yeah. Somebody said something about stamps or something. That reminds stamps? me. Of, yeah, I forgot to do the PowerPoint update. Let me update the PowerPoint real quick. Like we put a stamp on a piece of paper and mail it to them every day. No, no, like a stamp in Google Drive or something. Oh. Uh. Yeah, something like that. Um, all right, let me get the, let me get the scores in for this. Um, a lot of, a lot of perfects on this one. How dare they? I know, they need to stop being so good at this. Are we on, what are we doing today? Chapter 27? 27 through 31. Person, that person, and that person. Uh, let's flip those. All right. Uh, let's see if anybody showed up in the chat. Nope. Nobody's talking. Rude. Hi, hi, all how, seven of y'all. Hi. How dare y'all? Really, six of y'all. Casey is also viewing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, there's Catherine. Catherine for the win. I believe it's Catherine. Kathy L. Hi, not Ashif. That's a suspicious name. Seems like it's one of those things that has an opposite meaning of what they were intending. Oh, is it really 27 to 32? Oops. 27 to 32. Did you not do the questions right in the quiz? Let's take a look. Well, it's not the end of the world if we accidentally don't have any questions on one of these uh, five trillion chapters. <laughs> It'll just happen tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, this is... Oh, we're on tomorrow's... Yeah, I'm a fool. Uh, we're on tomorrow's uh, discussion, tomorrow's reading. Um, oh, actually, I need to look. Then I need to look here. B -b 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 Cast credit week one. Scroll down, scroll down. Uh, oh, you're. Are you chapter third? Are you? Are you these questions? Yes, you yes. are. Okay. So, yeah, they're correct, then. <laughs> <laughs> Yours are definitely going to be correct. Um, you mean the, the chapter? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I finally finished all of mine. So that hey, nice. congratulations. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I have to start up the the next set soon here. Um, yeah, okay, so we're doing the 32. Uh, I did not read 32 in my quick review before this. Dynamite money. Dynamite. Okay, we'll wait a little bit and get some other people in here. Um, and then we'll start, uh, we'll do awards. There's a lot today, a lot of awards. Although those varsities need to be taking their quizzes. Especially certain varsities who maybe were on the final team last year. Not naming names, although it's only literally one person. Uh, that would be doing this. Not a whole so, lot. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to tell you, if you're near Schoology, if you pop into the decathlon course and click on the badge thing, I just made one and see if you like it. The badge said, thing. Yeah, over on the left, like, there's materials, updates, gradebook, Ooh. badges. Oh, nice. That's awesome. So we could do something like that. Yeah, we could do something like that. And then you just check mark the, the people who do well. So... Okay. Okay. And you can put whatever picture you want in it. That's just the old cover of Cat's Cradle, so I was trying to make it look creepy. Nice. Nice. So there's one badge for, like, chapters one through five, and then we can just do badges for each day, and then we can do yeah. overalls. Okay. Yeah, and they can, they can all look the same if you want, or whatever. Yeah. That's neat. All right. Um, bup, 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 bup. let's see here uh, what did I want uh, actually I do need to do that real quick yep 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 save and exit yep um, leave edit stream info uh, cats cradle discussion done um, let me also send out another thing here uh, bu -bu 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 Okie dokie. Yeah, let's go ahead and get... Well, let me pull back up the, uh, the text. Oh, man. You know, I said a nap. I said a run's coming later, but maybe it's actually a nap. <laughs> Both are solid uses of time. That's true. That's a very good point. And uh, it's going to be so lovely all day. You could nap and then go for a run at like 7 and it'll still feel nice outside. That's true, that's true. But I'm probably going to go hang out with uh, my girlfriend tonight. Uh, breaking all uh, manner of uh, quarantine laws. Well, uh, we collectively as a group are judging you. Yep. Um, well, you know, if either of us is sick, then the other one's sick. And that's how it works. Uh, we actually, uh, I believe, uh, she signed on the contract for her house uh, yesterday. So oh, that's exciting. Uh, yeah, I will soon be a, a, I will soon be a member of Missouri City, a citizen. It's not a bad little city. No, nah, it's got its parts. All right, uh, let's go and get started on Cat's Cradle. Uh, first medals for. Uh, Thursday. Uh, in the honors, we had a lot of perfects. We had Elise. Clap, clap, clap. Clap, clap, clap. Uh, we had Amber. Clap, 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 clap. Uh, we had Ashith. All the A's. We got Triple A here. Coming in uh, roadside assistance. Heyman's hey, getting <laughs> on the board. Clap, clap, clap. Uh, <clears throat> Huda. Clap, 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 clap. Uh, we got. Um, Rachel, Rachel K. I need to be adding this. Rachel K. Clap, 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 clap. Uh, and Saloni. Clap, 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 clap. I think that's it. Oh, I no. Was, I was hoping the next. Ah. And Umer. 
I was going to really hope that the next letter after the after Rachel's name started with a G. So if we just looked at the beginning letters, it would just be Arg. It, it, now it's just Arzu. Which <laughs> is close. Scholastics. We got Afia. Afia, keeping it coming. Uh, we have David. David, well done. These are all perfects as well. Uh, we have Emery. Emery ending the week with the uh, with the only perfect score of anybody on the team. Uh, literally got every single question right. Isabella. Isabella. Well done. Uh, Josh. Or Joshua. Whichever one you want to call him. Clap, clap, clap. And Tam with that perfect. Clap, clap, clap. Starleaf. Well done. Uh, is that it? Yes, and then the varsities. We had two perfects, and then we had third place. Leah with another perfect. Clap, 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 clap. Uh, Surya with a perfect score. Clap, 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 clap. Although he may have done it late, but that's okay. Uh, and then Conrad. Well done, Conrad. Clap, 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 clap. Yes, practice your clapping again. That's that's the number one thing we do here. Woo woo. All right. Uh, let's get into this. Yeah, good job, Afia. Good job, Ashif. Good job, Heyman. All y'all are in the chats. All right. Uh, boop, boop. Let's go. Uh, let's uh, let's start with a different color today. Um, let's go with this kind of pinkish, purplish one. Uh, with the chapter "Men from Mars." Okay. Um, all right, so uh, the uh, the la doctor Doctor Honecker's Felix's lab is on the sixth floor. Okay, um, his lab is on the sixth floor. Um, oh, there's actually an appropriate color for this for this uh, chapter. Uh, and Afia, you're gonna give virtual stickers uh, in Schoology. We will have a we will have a sticker thing there uh, that we will do. Uh, thanks to Miss Johnston discovering that. Um, uh, so we have the lab on the sixth floor. What color is the cord that covers the the laboratory that stretches across the doorway? Purple. Yes, we got a purple cord. Are uh, there any historic connotations for the color purple? Uh, I'm going to let them try to guess first uh, before I say anything. Uh, with a brass plate. Um, I wasn't really. I mean, I was asking for them. Oh, okay. <laughs> like I know the answer. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I do too. I want to see if any of them maybe have a have a have a stab at that. Um, the purple, purple people eater. Royalty. There you go. There you go. Yeah, purple equals blue and red. <laughs> uh, yes, royalty, specifically the Roman uh, royalty or Roman emperors <laughs> and stuff. Yep, definitely. Um, how long did he work in that laboratory? And also, what did he get a Nobel in? He worked there for 28 years. That's a long time. Uh. He's got nothing on Bonnie Beard, though. No. No, no, not at all. Uh, did you see, I don't know if you saw this, I saw on Twitter, apparently they're doing, like, um old high school games on youtube and they're kind of going through them and apparently dulles made the state championship in like 1991 i did not know that yeah it was cool um they talk about uh where he was as the frontier of knowledge uh and one thing i again be the kind of foreshadowing here uh his history uh uh the importance of this one man in history of mankind um uh importance to the history of mankind is incalculable They say he's the frontier of knowledge, and remember, we're in Ilium still, which was kind of the gateway oh, yes. to the frontier back in the day as well. Yep, more more frontier frontier speak. Um, so uh, he goes in, uh, and then he says he's gonna hang out with whatever whatever ghosts are there, um, and she says it's just as it was, except for what is missing. It's just as it was when he died, except for one thing, or several one things. Ra 
Rubber bands. That's right. Uh, rubber bands were all over his desk. Why might rubber bands have been all over his desk? I have a theory. I'm not saying it's the truth. Nobody? Nobody wants to take a crack at this one? We already, already know he's insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, he's, he's a totally stable genius, guys. He's <laughs> nothing, nothing weird has happened with him at all in this book. <laughs> Uh, Miss Johnson, do you have a possible guess as to what the use of the rubber bands was? Well, uh, if you're bored, you can play with them, and you could maybe make a cat's cradle out of them. Maybe. That's very possible. Um, it's, and, and, like, a tight cat's cradle. Like, that thing's gonna hurt when it breaks. Yeah, there yeah. you go, Catherine. Yeah, maybe he's doing a cat's cradle. Yeah, or several of them. All right. Um, and so they talk about, uh, the thing that's really, uh, pretty... That, that is scattered throughout the laboratory are cheap toys and what are the what are the different cheap toys that are found there there's one two three four five i think five different items of cheap toys i wouldn't i would say one of them wasn't necessarily a cheap toy but the rest are definitely toys well i don't know i'm not sure what one of them is Paper kite with a broken spine. We got a paper kite with a broken spine. We got a toy gyroscope. Uh, gyroscope uh, with uh, string ready to whir and balance itself. Uh, we've got the uh, top. We've got the fishbowl. Uh, with a castle and two turtles, which I don't I don't know how much of a toy that is. Gyroscope head string. One more. The thing I don't really know what it is. Can you fix a gyroscope with rubber bands? I mean, it's not broken. Uh, I mean, if you cut them open, you could replace the string with them, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and a bubble pipe, which I don't know what that is. It's uh, those little plastic pipes that you put bubbles in, and when you blow through it, the bubbles come out of the pipe, so it looks like smoke, but it's bubbles. Huh. No, I, I, I've never seen one of those. Really? Nope. You're missing out. <laughs> apparently. I, had a, I, I apparently had a terrible youth. Uh, <laughs> he loved 10 cent stores, uh, and then they talk about how some of his most ex ex famous experiments were performed uh, that cost less than a dollar. Um, and then the old the old adage, a penny saved is a penny earned. I do want to point out that for the 10 cent stores, a lot of times at this this time period, they were called five and 10 cent stores or five and dimes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and this, I doubt it's important, but we are going to see sort of another allusion to the idea of a five and dime store later when we meet uh, Julian Castle, spoiler alert. Okay. Um, it probably has no significance, but as I was rereading this, I was like, oh, okay, well, that's that from later. All right. I did. I don't remember that one from later, but I, I, we'll have to uh, pick that back up when we get there and kind of reference back to Chapter 27. It's a very tenuous connection. Sure, of but course. It's... Yeah. That's half of our things here. Uh, what <laughs> is What is covering Dr. Honecker's desk? I will point out for the bubble pipe, you don't breathe in, you blow out, and the bubbles go up, so you're not yes, getting high yes. on bubbles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. Uh, letters, yes. Also, they say call it correspondence, and uh, that he never answers. Right, You have to come find him or get him on the phone uh, to actually listen to him. No, 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 Heyman, you're not wrong. Uh, we're getting there. Uh yeah, so he never answers those letters. Uh, and then there's a framed photograph. And Jonah can't see it at this point. It's facing away from him. But he assumes it's either his family or his children, his wife or his children or him. And it turns out, what is the framed photo? It 
was a war memorial. There's more to it. Uh, yeah, we got cannonballs. We got stacked cannonballs. Uh, what's in what's in front of the what's what's in the background of this of this picture? There's a sign with people who died. In front of a small town courthouse. Thank you, Ramus Hash Brown. That's a name. Man, I got I I bought I uh I did the, I did the evil deed of going to the store while hungry. Oh no. Yeah, so I, that's when I bought the chips, and then I also bought uh, some some hash some frozen hash browns. And rookie and, mistake. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. Yeah, and so it's a, it's a picture of the, how the cannonballs were stacked, right? They're stacked in a specific way, right? They've got them stacked in a picture that's very unusual. So let's actually call them unusually stacked cannonballs, right? Uh, and then they talk about he's an unusual man. Um, and then um, his spouse says, maybe in a million years, everybody will be as smart as he was and see the way things he did. Uh, but he is as different as a man from Mars, uh, maybe he really was a Martian, Jonah asks, and then, and then she says that that could explain his kids. Um, so we're we're finally kind of getting to the kids a little bit more, and we're gonna get we're getting closer and closer. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think him being a man from Mars is interesting. Again, kind of what we talked about in the last, I think the last one. Um, maybe thinking about like him is not of this world. Uh, uh, maybe some sort of devilish figure. Right, mayonnaise. Um, so she helped. She hoped for not number five, the elevator to come. She didn't want the number five elevator to come uh, to get them uh, from the sixth floor, uh, but it does. Um, and its operator is a is a man named who? Yes, this is a this is an interesting chapter. Lyman Enders Knowles. Did anyone else kind of picture him as um, like Rafiki from The Lion King? No, I did not. Like the the kooky old baboon that like shakes stick at people and yeah. just chants yeah. randomly. Sure. <laughs> um, what I find interesting is that this is uh, so this is a black man. Uh, Lyman's a black man. He is only one of two uh, named black people in this entire book. Um, uh, and, and I, and to, to kind of characterize him as insane, right? And then also kind of in context of the other black character, right? I think is, uh, interesting, um, cause I think you can make the argument that the other one also, uh, might be a little out there, which I, I don't, I don't know if Vonnegut's doing anything on purpose here, right? It's, uh, especially at this time, right? One of the kind of common jobs for, uh, a black man in an urban area was to be an elevator operator. Um, you see it in, like, in Mad Men, right? Uh, the elevator operator, uh, was a black man, and so, you know, I don't know if there's, a, he's trying to say anything, but, uh, I found that just as interesting. Scientific racism? Very possible. Um, so, uh, yeah, he grabs his own behind and cries, yes, yes, whenever he made a point. And he called them fellow something, something, and something. What, what does he call them? Yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot happening in this chapter. I just don't know what it means. I feel like it means something. Uh, we have anthropoids. Uh, we have lily pads. And we have paddle wheels. What a what an interesting thing to call people. <laughs> What's up, my fellow anthropoids? Uh, and so Miss Faust coldly says first floor, uh, and he's not 
he does, he's not pressing the button. Uh, and he says that this elevator is what type of architecture? Mayan architecture. And then he says, well, if this elevator's Mayan, what does that make me? Yes, mayonnaise. Or mayonnaise. What an interesting, interesting turn of phrase. Yes, may mayonesque, or like to be <laughs> to be of the Mayans, right? Uh, like like <clears throat> if you're if you're um, English, right? Anglais, right? Is kind of the French way of saying that. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Um, and then he talks about he hit him with a question that strained him up, and made him think twice as hard. Uh, and then what's that question that he asked the man about? I'm assuming the man is Dr. Honecker, but they don't I don't think they say. Anybody? Bueller? <laughs> that's that's not a that's not a reference these the, the kids will get these days probably. Oh, we never know. You never know. Uh, all right. Well, we'll keep going. Uh, he he talks about research, right? Uh, research means to kind of look again. There you go. Uh, what did they lose? What are they trying to find? And what who lost it? It's your day off. It's dude. It's the first day of the week. You had you had four day you had you had four days off. Uh, yeah. So he says research means look again. They're looking for something they found and got away somehow. Um, how come they got to build a building like this with mayonnaise elevators filled with all these crazy people? Um, so yeah. And then could we go down? And then he's like, the only way we can go is da it's down. Um, and then uh, uh, he goes on and he's like hey this guy is coming to see Honaker's office um, and then he says uh, when he heard Dr. Honaker dies he says Dr. Honaker's not, day, uh, not dead oh I did I did uh, misunderstand you there uh, uh, Heyman 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 Canwar's day off um, oh I gotcha yes we're we're behind the time we're behind the curve here uh he says dr honecker ain't dead uh just entered a new dimension uh and then they finally talk about uh he asks he asks uh lyman if he knew the honecker children and what does he say about the honecker children babies full of rabies what what a what a name that's a good band name right there babies full of rabies oh boy um so yeah i think uh what do you what do you think about this lyman enders Knoll character miss johnston i, I does he does he represent something here, or is he just just a really interesting guy? Later in the book, we're going to kind of get that idea of good and evil, kind of a back and forth, and this is a guy who literally only goes two directions all day, up and down. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he seems like a kook, but at one point, and it, yes, he's talking about the elevator, because he says the only way we can go is down, because the sixth floor is the top floor. Right. But right. remember, you, we still have Miss Faust in there, and if we're going to continue with the idea of the Faustian bargain of, like, making a deal with the devil, mm -hmm. the only mm -hmm. way you can go down is down. Yeah. And it seems yeah. like you're heading to uh, the underworld. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. That's, uh... That's, uh... Sorry, you're, uh... I'm, re I'm repeating on yours and it's 
I can hear myself. It's weird. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely caught that as well of like, um, certainly like going down is like, yes, you're, you're descending into hell at this point. Um, and, that and if hell is the first floor, then that's just the earth. Yeah. Yeah. That's also true. Uh, especially when the earth is, uh, uh, frozen over, uh, much like hell. Um, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Definitely. Um, the mayonnaise Mayan thing is hilarious. I just don't know if it means, I don't think it means anything. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, all very interesting stuff there. Well, I mean, it is kind of weird that they use the Mayans like, when they could choose any other architecture. Because weren't the Mayans the one that had the calendar for the end of the world, allegedly? Yes. Yeah, they did. Uh, 2012, end of the world. Yep. That's very true. That is interesting. I thought he just maybe wanted to make a mayonnaise joke. Well, could be that, too. Yeah. All I'm right. telling you, I just picture the guy as Rafiki. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, the, uh, the, uh, so the last thing he wants to do in Ilium is go to the old man's tomb. He wants to go to Dr. Honecker's tomb. Uh, he picks up his camera and hires a cab. Uh, Sandra has left. Sandra's gone from the story pretty much at this point. Um, and then Sleet, as he's going down, going to the, uh, going to the graveyard, uh, to the tombstone, uh, Sleet's coming down. Uh, they describe it as acid and gray. Um, and then he, he starts thinking about the picture he might get to photograph of the tombstone. What does he say about that picture uh, that he might be able to get for the for the tombstone? If they were a band, they should sing Calypso's. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the, the, yes, the sleet is acid and gray, but what does he say about the photograph that's going to come out of this, possibly? If he takes a photograph. The jacket of the book, yes. Good for the cover of his book. Right. Um, uh, and so he says, uh, he goes to the cemetery guy, the custodian, he says, hey, you can't miss it. It's the biggest marker in the place. Um, and then, uh, it, describe, describe this tombstone marker. Well, it is the wrong person, but describe the, describe the, yeah, the alabaster phallus. <laughs> oh, boy. What color is alabaster, guys? I think I know, but I could be wrong. What? <laughs> well, it it is it is white. <laughs> yes, it's white white gypsum. You didn't have to add that last part though, Hamon. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter, young man. Inappropriate. Yeah, just because he says phallus doesn't mean you can go straight to what it actually means. <laughs> <laughs> We're not here for that. I agree, Catherine. Why? <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, he's, his cab driver goes with him and he's like, Hey, that's a suitable memorial to the father of the atom bomb. Um, he wants the driver to stand next to it so he can, he can get to scale, which 20 feet high is very high. It's double the size of a basketball goal, which is not nice. Uh, uh, and so he, he has him wipe away some of the sleet. Turns out, uh, who is the, uh, who is this the tomb for? I don't know why he would describe it like that either. Except I guess most tombstones kind of with their curvy shape. Uh, well, I, I kind of pictured it as sort of like an obelisk. Sure. Okay. You're probably one of the most innocent kids in your WAP class. Well, you're making me, uh, you're making me wonder. Uh, it's yes. It's very intentional on Vonnegut's part though. I mean, he's describing it as a phallus and then he says right there on the shaft in letters six inches high. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely doing that on purpose. He definitely is. 
he and def- yeah, you you think it's gonna be for Felix, and then it would, and that's why he makes the joke. <laughs> that's suitable memorials of the father of the atom bomb. Yeah, you know, like one oh, of those right, you know, right. compensation kind of things. Right, it's for the mom. That's true. That's a very good point. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, Emily Honecker's uh, Emily Honecker's um, grave sites tombstone. Um, and so the driver incredulously asks mother uh and then we have these two poems uh who are these poems by yep we got angela and frank making some poetry here uh and then do we have anything from newt uh, on the on the grave on the tombstone. Hand, an an a handprint, yeah, an imprint of his hand. I'll just go handprint. Uh, and let's uh let's look at these poems real quick. Angela, uh, mother, mother, how I pray for you to guard us every day. Um, and then Franklin's is, you are not dead, but only sleeping. We should smile and stop our weeping. Um, I think giving us a little bit of a, of an insight into each of these characters that we haven't met yet, right? We've already met Newt, technically, or in a sense, right? Um, and also, of course, he has the handprints because she died while giving birth to Newt, so he's not going to be able to write poetry yet. Um, and so that means we have a, what a, we have like a seven-year-old Frank, and a and a seventeen year old Angela, uh, assuming they wrote this at the time of her death, which is maybe not true. Um, considering that uh, her dad, that I'm assuming their dad didn't care too much. Uh, they might explain a little more of that. Um, yeah, I mean later, I think you get the impression that it happened, maybe a little bit later, yeah. because of how they paid for it. Yeah, yeah. But we don't have the exact timeline on that to, that I'm aware of. No, we do not. Um, so Angela, with the kind of guarding us every day, seems like she wants some sort of security, some sort of protection, uh, and Frank is kind of just, like, discard this thought, right? Almost that kind of, like, almost like trying to be masculine about it, like, oh, we should stop crying about it, right? You're, every, mom, moms die all the time, kind of thing, right? Um. (laughs) She's dead, get over it. Yeah, exactly. Uh I will point out that we, when we see Angela speak or have words attributed to her, there is always kind of this, I don't, I don't know, like religious undertone to it. Mm-hmm. Um, like, not necessarily faith-based in the way we would think of like an Episcopalian or a Methodist or a Catholic or whatever, but I mean, later we're going to find out her faith is kind of in her father, but it is kind of yeah. interesting that her name is Angela, Angel. Yeah, that's true. And she's the one that has the kind of religious illusions when she's speaking because when you're talking about mother mother how i pray for you to guard us every day it's like she wants her mom to be her guardian angel yeah definitely and especially um you know i think she yeah as you pointed out she very clearly worships at the altar of uh felix honecker right of her of her father like that's her whole life revolved around him uh, as we're going to see later um, but also maybe, you know, she needs her mother to kind of protect her from the vagaries of that, from the, from the stress it causes her, from the, you know, from kind of, we're almost worshiping this man that doesn't, is, is, um, what's the looking for, is, uh, doesn't care about it, what happens. Really, he's kind of abusive through neglect. I mean, yes. it's definitely a form of emotional abuse that's happening in that house. Yes, Absolutely. Uh, and Ashith, uh, Ashith points out they come into the shop a year later, so Angela's 18, Frank's 8, and Newt is 1, I guess, right? Um, okay. So, yeah, yeah, definitely some abuse, but I think, I don't know, it just may, it, maybe I'm, I'm getting to something ridiculous, but if, you, if we kind of talk about Felix as this Martian, we've been kind of maybe saying he's kind of a devil figure, but maybe he is a, a god, and a god that is particularly uncaring, right? About, or a false god. Or a false god, right? Um, certainly, like, a, or like, yeah, you know, even the devil in, in God's, you know, in, in the way that people worship him, right? We saw, 
you know going into his laboratory we saw that that purple row that purple cloth right uh the um the purple whatchamacallit the like straight curtain, curtain yeah. yeah rod uh that stuff right kind of like worshiping at this it's almost like uh he went into some sort of like uh, memorial to to a god or some sort of temple right going to that laboratory and angela you know very much uh treats him like that um as well anyways that's a that's just me throwing ideas out no you're i mean i think that idea of the the false god plays into the book book canonism <laughs> undercurrent of this book yeah uh, yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, Catherine, you're right on it, right? The the anti religion theme of Bocanonism definitely. Right. And I, I think we see those subtle reminders that maybe Felix isn't as great as some of the people say he is. I mean, even the next line in the book about him is says, If that's mother, what in hell could they have raised over father? Yeah, right. Um, so then we uh, have that again, that kind of hell demon kind of potential connection. Yeah. And then uh to kinda I, I kind of wrote this up here, so I don't forget to kind of go on with the anti-religion aspects of Bocanonism, and clearly this book, right? Also, maybe the the worry about the the worship of science going too far, right? Of of like if everything is about science, right, then you're going to lead to scenarios where, you know, people who are incredible geniuses are going to come up with ways to literally end us all, right? Which is very you know anti-nuclear war, uh, mm-hmm. kind of kind of ideas. So yeah, they go try to find uh, the the idea of being Felix's tomb is going to be if if this is just Felix's wife, what could Felix's tomb look like? Turns out his memorial uh, he he wrote into his will he's supposed to have a certain exact memorial uh, uh, a tombstone and what was the size of that tombstone? A forty a marble cube, forty centimeters, uh, uh, forty centimeters on each t- side, which um, just seems like an interesting memorial, a tombstone shape, right? Um, you know, not necessarily as interesting as the as the alabaster phallus, um, but yeah, and it just says father on it. Doesn't say Honaker. Just says father. Um, just like mother, right? Which I, I found I, I don't I don't know how interesting that is, but it is it is a thing. Um, where are we at? Okay, thirty one. I don't by having it be that kind of. Uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for detachment. I guess maybe that kind of bland detachment. It suggests that these kids didn't really know either of their parents. Also true. Also very true. Uh, I mean, the poetry kind of implies they maybe did know something about their mother, right? But also that could just be like, as we'll see later, there a lot of the reasons for that tombstone are purely selfish on behalf of the children. Mm-hmm. Uh, go to, uh, so afterwards they go to the cabbie's mother's grave to see what's going on there. Um... And so they take a little detour there. Uh, an interesting look into Jonah, where he calls the the gravestone pathetic. Uh, pathetic little stone. Right. Not that it mattered. Yeah, Haman's hey, uh, emotional ties to the mother, which weren't reciprocated with the father. Not only reciprocated with the father, but reciprocated by the father to the mother as well, right? Definitely. Yeah, and he talks about that, in, not that it matters you know kind of trying to like almost cover his tracks in a way you know like oh it is it didn't matter you know but man it looked like crap um yeah it's just it's like i guess jonah's kind of getting caught up in this being in the presence of greatness you know of the honakers um at least according in his thought right um and then they go across the street to a tombstone salesman which um man talk about uh talk about great location <laughs> um tombstone salesman across the street uh and so he goes across uh why does he say that he 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 only agreed with some peevishness He 
He wasn't a Boko yet. Right, he is not a Boko yet. Uh, but when he is a Boko, right, uh, one of the key things about being a Boko is uh, uh, he calls, uh, uh, Boko known calls peculiar travel uh, something, right? He says peculiar travel is equal to something. What is it? Yeah, if he was a Boko Nonis at that point, uh, he would have agreed wholeheartedly, gaily, yes, happily. Dancing lessons from God. Is it capitalized? It is capitalized. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, and the name of the tombstone salesman is Avram Breed. Uh, and, or, sorry, that's the name of the, the name of the company is Avram Breed and Sons. I apologize. I don't know if it's necessarily Avram Breed who runs it. Um, uh, and so he, he sees, he go he starts, uh, the driver's talking to the salesman, and then I wonder if the, I wonder if the cabbie driver, after seeing the Honecker's memorials, wants to buy his mother a better one, maybe. That's the impression I got. Yeah, uh, I didn't think about it until now. Um, so Adam Breen sons, uh, and then he goes in the cab. He's talking to the salesman, uh, and he starts to go around um, and and looks at the blank monuments uh, or the the monuments. Uh, to the memory of nothing, which, again, I'm, I'm kind of thinking out loud, processing out loud. This seems very, also very um, foreboding, uh, because, um, like, if you think about the nuclear bomb, right? If you think about all the millions of people or hundreds of thousands, I'm not, I can't tell you how many people I know died during the nuclear bombs, right? You know, when an entire community gets you know decimated like that there's nobody left to remember who they were you know um so that's almost like a memory of nothing right you're 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 kind of you're 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 memorializing people you didn't know and nobody knew at that point yeah and anytime there's that kind of mass death a lot of times as societies we use mass nameless faceless graves mm -hmm. i mean you know, kind of. I'm not saying they're doing mass graves, but if you've seen the, the images out of Italy recently, you know they're just lining up coffins, waiting for the ability to to bury them, and so you just have these row after row after row of coffins stacked in the churches where no one can go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then yeah, and then also like things like the kind of tomb of the unknown soldier, uh, kind of memorials that we see in I don't I know quite a lot of countries. I think I don't think it's just here. Um, but yeah. Anyways. Uh, <clears throat> An institutional joke. What is the institutional joke that uh, Jonah comes across in the Avram Breed and Sons tombstone shop? A stone angel with a mistletoe. Right, so like a stone angel, right, kind of thinking like, you know, angels tend to be quite beautiful and pretty, but you got a stone one, uh, and above the stone angel is a mistletoe, right? Uh, which is, you know, for those of you who don't know, is a Christmas thing where if you're under a mistletoe, you're supposed to kiss the person under the mistletoe. Um, you got cedar bows uh, heaped along her pedestal. Uh, and then uh, there a uh, Christmas tree lamps. What is, what is that like? Oh, like lights that go on a Christmas tree. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, I would think so. Or or, or maybe it's like those kitschy necklaces where the bulbs are in a shape and they're maybe. Yeah, in a shape. that's possible. Uh, it was made of marble. What was made of marble? It says stone. Oh, her marble throat. That is weird. Her throat is marble, but they say it's stone angel. Huh. Is is marble a type of stone? I guess so. You're right. It totally is. I'm a fool. Fun, fun fact. Cedar boughs are used to represent incorruptibility. Okay. 
spiritual dedication and constant faith when used as an incense. Uh, and I immediately, when I saw the word angel, I was reminded of Angela, mm -hmm. um, which if, if you, if you were to point to almost anybody who is the most incorruptible in this book, she might be close to the top. She is almost like, she's almost got this kind of like, uh, you know, angelic kind of appearance of, of being this person who looks out for others and takes care of others. She does say some things that maybe that make you question her for, for certain, but, um, and she, and what was that last part you said about the cedar bows? Um, in, oh, I'm sorry. I closed it out. Uh, Catherine here, uh, father, back to the mother father things could be referenced to the use of those words in Catholicism for priests and nuns. Spiritual dedication and constant faith. Okay. Uh, so, Catherine, I could see that too, right? Uh, uh, she's kind of ethereal, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I could see that as well, right? The mother and father. Uh, and really... Well, nuns are usually called sister, except for the, um, like, top nun. Then she's the, the, like, house mother or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You could even maybe go... Um, you could even go um, to on the tr on the religious thing though. Mother maybe being the Virgin Mary, Father being God, uh, Son being Jesus, Holy Spirit, right? And so then you could you know you could maybe kind of make that connection out, and maybe being the the Holy Spirit of this being uh, Ice Nine, right, uh, or something like that. You know you could go there as well. Uh, she's also very ethereal, definitely like an angel in a way. Um, I'm, I, do you still have the cedar bows open? So, oh, she's she's like uh, she's very dedicated, right? She's she's very mm -hmm. dedicated to the the idea of Doctor Honaker, right? And has constant faith in him. Yes, constant faith, even when he's <laughs> talking about turtles. Person. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he goes. He says, "Not for sale." It was made by his great grandfather, uh, uh, Ivan Breed, right? The founder of the store, right? Um, and he is the fourth generation to own it. Uh, and he is related to Dr. Asa Breed, of course. He is Asa's brother. So, Avram and Asa. Uh, and then, Jonah says it's a small world. And then, what is, what is, uh, what does Mr. Breed say here? Marvin Breed. Sorry, Marvin. Yeah, it's his younger brother, yeah. Did they say younger? Uh, no. They just said it was his brother. Yeah, I just think they I said mean, later brother. they're going to tell you, but... Okay. Uh, yes, the world is small when you put it in a cemetery. Oh, boy. Sleek and vulgar, a smart and sentimental man. Yep. It's not words you usually put together. I know, it's very interesting. Sleek and vulgar, smart and sentimental. Sleek and vulgar, smart and sentimental. Interesting. Uh, oh, yeah. Abraham. Abram is apparently formed with the name Abram from Abraham. and means exalted father. Right, Abraham, obviously the, you know, the founder of the Abrahamic... Uh, religions are the 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 Ur father. Another set of three. Which ones? Abraham. Yeah, the Abrahamic religions. Oh yeah, right, right. Um, Marvin, nothing there. I don't think. Uh, He's like the Bush brother that's always forgotten. Who? What? I said he's the Bush brother that's always forgotten. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the 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 railroad commissioner. You're like, oh, we've got George, and we've got Jeb, and then uh, Neil, and what's the, oh, the other one? What's the other one? <laughs> is, is that, isn't he the railroad commissioner? Uh, or is that a different bush? There's a, there's the one that's the general land office guy, and I think yeah. that's one of Jeb's kids. I want to say his name might, might be George. Oh, George okay. George E. Bush? Maybe. I don't know. There's a lot of them running around. Could he have lived with Abe Lincoln? Or named after Abe Lincoln? Maybe if the story took place in Illinois. Yeah. And who, who are we saying was named after? 
Oh, uh, yeah, who are you saying is named after Abe Lincoln, possibly? Because we have Asa. I think a Abram oh, is since it's Abraham. Abraham, Abe, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so, uh, gotcha, yeah. Uh, so he goes and says, hey, I just interviewed your brother about Dr. Honecker. Uh, he calls him a, a queer SOB, Mr. Honecker. And SOB starts getting thrown around a lot after this point. It really does. But it's does. interesting who gets called the SOB. Yes. Um, uh, and queer at this point, I, it means, like, uh, different. Odd. Yeah, different. Yeah. Asa means doctor and healer in Hebrew and is the name of the third king of Judah. Okay. Yeah. Catherine, thank you for the, thank you for the research. Um, that one's interesting as well. The doctor healer part, Asa is a, as a as a research doctor. Um, maybe maybe it's just a, a way to reference him as a doctor. Um, interesting. It, it takes on a different meaning now. Sorry, current events. Asa something or other is the the governor of I don't know Georgia or Florida or one of these places where they're ignoring all of the <laughs> the quarantine rules. Yeah. His name means healer. Yeah. There you go. Um, and so, uh, yeah, he calls Dr. Honecker this, this, this queer SOB, uh, and then, uh, he talks about the monument, and so he says he sold, uh, the wife's monument to the kids, uh, which obviously makes sense, because as we know from Dr. Honecker, he's, he's never gonna do that, right, he's never gonna get a monument like that, um, he didn't, and they just say that he didn't have anything to do with it, he never even put a marker on the grave, which we already knew. Um, after she'd been dead for a year or more, so we're saying year and some change, maybe, um, the three kids come in, they want the biggest stone money could buy, um, and the two olders have homes. It's all stuff we already know, so I'm not gonna write it down. Um, and then Marvin Breed says, uh, what does he say about the kids, the kids' reaction to the monument? Or, like, how they felt about it? Having my back door open with Zoe is an interesting time. She's not an outside cat, uh, but she she pretends to be for a brief second. <laughs> yeah, they got. He says they got a lot of consolation out of it, right? Um, the the kids got more consolation out of that than anything they could have bought, right? Ooh. Nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I just had a thought that another famous Marvin of this time period is Marvin the Martian. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Uh, Nothing to do with what we're no, talking about, guys. Nothing. No, no. no. <laughs> uh, and he says he used to come come there and put flowers on it. I don't know how many times a year. Right. Uh, it must have cost a lot of money. They bought it with the Nobel Prize money, which I didn't think was that much. Well, isn't it like a million dollars now? But I don't know what it would have been in the 60s. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize it was that much. Um, and what else did the Nobel Prize money buy? Marvin Sharp Holderness and Marvin Breed. Okay, we do have two Marvins. Vonnegut ran out of names. <laughs> Yes. Marvin has no deeper meaning. It's just an unfortunate name. Yeah, it also buys the Cape Cod <laughs> Cottage. Don't tell. Oh, we have a. Oh, don't tell Marvin that. <laughs> right. Um. And then Jonah, then kind of just pondering on the Nobel Prize money. Uh, what does he call the Nobel Prize money? Making those noises like you've turned 30, bud. Yeah, I'm, I've got three months left in the tank. <laughs> he calls it dynamite money. Because uh, Alfred Nobel invented dynamite. Um, and then he, he goes about, he talks about 
thinking of the violence of dynamite and the repose of a tombstone in a summer home. And it's like, you're so close. You're so close, Jonah. You're so close. <laughs> like, don't be thinking about the violence of dynamite. Right? Maybe we think about the violence of an atomic bomb or something. I don't know. Um, well, I think it's that juxtaposition. He's trying to oh, to give you that. Yeah, totally. Totally. Absolutely. It's just like, it, but uh, to me, like in the character of Jonah, it's like almost this kind of like blindness to what Felix has done, you know, um, by trying to kind of explore who he is and whatnot. Well, and that's another thing I find so interesting about this book. The more you find out about the Honecker family, the more it seems like they're pretty private, closed-off people that don't interact much. Everybody else knows their business. Yeah, that's also true. That's a very good point. I wonder I wonder why that is. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, the dad is kind of famous, but, like, how does he know what they use the money for? I, obviously, he knows they bought the, the tombstone, but... Why does he know they bought a cottage? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And Breed's all up in their business. That's true. Maybe he, maybe Asa has told them all about it. Yeah. It's just one of those hmm, yeah. things. Uh, and so we get introduced to my favorite Bocanonist phrase, uh, busy, 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 um, which kind of goes to kind of the... the, the complexity of of life right uh the uh, when it's impossible to explain uh the complex ability and unpredictability of life right um, busy busy uh, busy is kind of an interesting phrase we have that that repetition in there yep but if you if you say it it sort of makes a sound Z, 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 uh, like bees. Like busy bees. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That is interesting. What was the other? Or, there was another triplet phrase that I pointed out earlier that we related to busy, busy, busy. Oh, dude, that's been a while. Yeah. Was it? I forget what it was. Maybe, maybe one of the kids can remind us. Um, and then as a Christian, he says, life is sure funny sometimes. And then Marvin Breed says, sometimes it isn't, which is the exact type of humor you would expect from somebody who owns a tombstone company. Was it the nice, nice, very, oh, they got yeah, it. They got it. <laughs> nice, nice, very nice. Uh, which is also a Boca Nonist thing. They beat me to the punch. They did. Uh, let's go find what that said um that's very early that's like the first day it's like the second chapter it's the yeah. second chapter yeah it says oh a sleeping drunkard up in central park and a lion hunter in the jungle dark and a chinese dentist and a british queen all fit together in the same machine nice nice very nice 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 very nice 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 very nice so many different people in the same device so this is it almost feels like the opposite of what busy busy busy's complaining about where nice nice very nice is like oh it's all perfectly fits together in this cross when it absolutely doesn't like the 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 simplicity of this cross is completely made up by by bocanonism right uh like th these these three or four different groups of people or three or four different people somehow fitting into the same cross is just bogus right it's not real uh, uh, it's as freeform as an amoeba. Get it right. You're right. I'm sorry. It's freeform as amoeba. But then <laughs> when life is too complex to understand, instead of being as freeform as an amoeba, it's busy, busy, busy. Right? Which it, I think maybe goes back to the, like, the contradictions at the heart of not only Bocanonism, but also of religion. Right? Well, and then you have that kind of, if you're comparing those two things, you have that juxtaposition, too, of a free form as an amoeba, and busy, 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 which you get that buzzing of bees, and we know bees are, like, hyper-ordered creatures, yeah. very structured. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So it's, it's yeah, I, I, I don't know, I don't know where to necessarily place this. I just think it's very interesting that, like, we have these two you know, re repetitive phrases that almost mean the opposite, um, in a way, right? Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's, uh, that's all the reading for, uh, tomorrow. This is tomorrow's stuff. Uh, I think this book's finally starting to kind of 
pick up here um pretty soon though i don't know how soon but it gets it starts running <laughs> like there's a point where you just can't stop reading in this book because you're like what is what is happening here and then it runs out and you're like uh okay yeah it's and then it's done you're like uh all right which uh hopefully we'll we'll be able to maybe find some meaning in um, not necessarily from ourselves, but hopefully from some other outside sources if, if we can't do it ourselves. Uh, does I just any... hope you all have a paperback copy of this because when I read it the first time, it was on digital book, and I was like, wait, where's the rest? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody got any questions or anything? Uh, thank you, guys. I, I, who's Ramus Hashbrown, by the way? I don't know who Ramus Hashbrown is. Uh, is Jonah trying to understand the purpose of Ice Nine at this point, or is still to learn about Felix? So he assumes at this point Ice Nine doesn't exist, right? So he's still trying to learn about Felix for his book, right? Uh, which, spoiler warning, his book is not going to get made, right? What? Well, I guess yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Talk yes. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, said, <laughs> I thought you said but, and I was like, uh. I was like, no, what? I mean, he kind of does make a book about it, right? It's a yeah, that idea of a book within an actual book. Yeah, uh, as Boko says, if you try to find meaning, you're gonna fail. So I can't know the, I can't know who Remus Hashbrown is. This is disappointing. Um, so yeah, so he's not he's not trying to find the purpose of Ice Nine again. Doesn't think it exists. He's just trying to learn about Felix for his book, and it's kind of just going on. Clearly, Vonnegut followed that advice. He doesn't explain stuff enough. Um, I think that's on purpose, though, right? There's there's definitely some things left short on purpose. Uh, especially at the end of the book, um, that are up. I, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I, got I was going to say, he, he's, he does, yeah, he doesn't go in and explain things clearly, but he gives you, and we've seen this back and forth, or this push and pull idea, and you're going to see it more in the coming chapters. Like, there's actually a, a, a Bokanist, Bokanonist phrase for that idea of this back and forth, this kind of seesaw adventure of life, good and evil, um, you know, that juxtaposition I keep talking about. Um, and, I, and I think that's very reflective of the times. Uh, you have to remember, this is the early 60s when you're very much in the Cold War. You have good and evil, except in propaganda, that's good, the capitalist versus bad, the communist. Uh, and you have things like the the worship of science, that we go back to that. You have the or not the atom bomb race that's done and the hydrogen bomb's been built but we have the space race which is the final frontier uh and you have these we're going to we kind of see this with the uh, expansion in the islands we have these large countries trying to take over power structures of smaller countries to spread their ideas and the ideas you know you have the spread of bokanonism and i mean it's, there's a lot going on that's parallel to what's happening in real life mm -hmm. And we don't always get all the answers in real life. So right. it's just commentary than explanation. Yeah. And, and you know, to, to piggyback on the idea of, like, the 60s of this, like, this this era is so complex and complicated and, and, and things so many things going on. They literally made an entire topic about this two years ago. Like, that was our entire topic was just the 60s. Uh, so it's a very, it's a very complicated time period. Um, and, yeah, so I think, I think... Uh, Miss Johnson kind of explained better than I ever could that it's yeah it's just uh, it's that's the way of the world right you sometimes can't explain it um, you kind of wait you kind of went on a little I did not expect you to go talking about uh, good old CIA overthrows of <laughs> Central American and Latin American democratically elected socialists and but, I mean that's clearly you know kind of these like banana republics are a factor in this book big yeah. time yep definitely definitely San Lorenzo is is certainly a uh, I don't know. I wouldn't call it a banana republic because the, 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 well, the irony about San Lorenzo, we're getting way ahead here, but the irony of San Lorenzo is there's nothing there. Like, they can't make anything. Yeah. Um, so at any rate, um, well, we're, we're getting ahead. We're spoil We're spoiling, uh, all of it for you guys. So I apologize about that. Um, don't just read the book. Come on. Yeah. Just read the, <laughs> just, just read the book. Um, uh, cat's cradle 27 to 32 is in the books. Um, you guys have a great day. We will talk, hopefully talk to you all tomorrow. Um, keep reading. Keep doing well. You guys are doing great. I'm really excited to see uh, what we're going to do going forward. Um, and maybe one day we'll learn who Remus Lupin is. I mean, not... Uh... Remus Hashbrowns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Y'all have uh, 
a good one. See ya. Bye, guys.